Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to b -Tech. It's Basil here comparing the Samsung Galaxy Note Edge with the Huawei P8 Max. The P8 Max has a 6.8 inch display. It is giant. The Note Edge has a 5.7 inch display. It is less giant, but it has a curved screen. Giant, curved screen. They're the two niche factors of these two phones. And that's why I thought it worthwhile comparing the two. Also, I don't have a Note 4 with me and mainly the specs between the Note Edge and the Note 4 are very, very similar. So it should give you an idea as to how those two stack up against one another. We can see side by side, the P8 Max really, really does deserve that name, Max. It is absolutely huge. I'm a bit of a giant, six foot four with big hands. Does fit in my hand pretty comfortably. It feels really nice and premium. Flat metal sides with a slight roundedness to them um, in order to make them ergonomic to hold a completely flat backing and a Gorilla Glass for front. Feels very good. Um, as for the Galaxy No Edge, it was always a bit of a device of contention. That edge leaves a kind of sharp, side, right-hand side. It isn't symmetrical, so it isn't as good for left-handed people as it might be for right-handed people, but it does come with some functionality in addition to cool design factor. You can um, have applications populate it, um, and you can also bring in some cool, if not slightly superfluous, tools like a ruler, for example, and stuff like that. But we can close all that up and talk you around the design of both. Um, and you can see the Note Edge has a 5.7 inch display, physical home button, which doubles up as a fingerprint scanner and two capacitive buttons either side. It's not the best fingerprint scanner out there. And Huawei seems to have ditched fingerprint scanners from its roster in its new devices. So maybe that's the way they're going. Fortunately though, the Samsung Galaxy S6 has a great fingerprint scanner. You can check out our full review of that and the S6 Edge if you haven't already. All right, back to the phone. Quad HD display, Super AMOLED technology, beautiful, beautiful sharpness. Right hand side, you've just got that edge, no buttons. Down at the base, you've got an S Pen. This has 2046, uh, 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. Wacom digitizer under the hood. That's the same amount of pressure sensitivity as a graphic design tablet. So it's cool on a number of levels. Micro USB connector, metal frame, feels nice and rich. You've got a volume rocker, and up at the top is a 3.5 mil jack and an infrared blaster as well. So this is a TV remote control. Up there is the power button too, seeing as they can't put that on the right hand side, obviously. If we move that out of the way, we can talk you around this. 6.8 inches, it's a beast. Very, very little bezeling though. 80% screen to body ratio, or over 80% in fact. Right hand side, you've got a volume rocker and an indented camera uh, power button. You've got two slots, two SIM card slots, and down at the base is a speaker. Why I claims the speaker on this thing is awesome. Similar to the P8, and we cannot wait to get that one in for review. Left hand side, no buttons at all. Up at the top, micro USB connector and a 3.5 mil jack. Flip side, 13 megapixel camera. Both of these 13, uh, both of these rear cameras, sorry, have optical image stabilization. Samsung's is 16 megapixels with flash. Um, Huawei's 13 megapixels with dual flash. Now, Huawei's done a couple of things to make their camera stand out. One is include a better optical image stabilization, they claim, than anyone else. But of course they're gonna claim that. Stay tuned to B-Tech and you can see our full review. Um, in addition, they've also got a DSLR grade um, imaging processor in there too. So hopefully that will make everything a little bit better when it comes to noise cancelling and raw uh, processing. Finally, the sensor itself has RGBW colors, so four color sensor to give you better um, contrast levels as well. If we swipe that out of the way, we can take a look at the user interfaces on both and it is Huawei's Emotion UI on top of Android 5.0 against Samsung's TouchWiz on top of Android 4.4. While we swipe through, I'm gonna bring the screens as close as I can with these tethered so you can get an idea of how they stack up against each other in terms of quality. Full HD versus Quad HD. So user interfaces are very different. Samsung has TouchWiz over Android. Um, you've got left-hand side Flipboard briefing, which is a very clunky news aggregator. You've also got, if I pinch out, a var variable number of home screens um, and a pull-down notifications tray from the top and two-finger swipe down will give me all my quick toggles. 
if I minimize that. The Ascend, uh, the P8 Max has a variable number of home screens as well. No application straight. Huawei has thrown all of the applications on the home screens. Here you can populate it though with widgets and shortcuts. Um, and you can also, if we jump through to one of those home screens, pull down for a spotlight search type search functionality. So Huawei really has lifted a lot of Apple's um, highlights and put them on here, but it should be familiar to anyone coming from an iOS device. If we were to swipe through, everything seems to run very, very smoothly, but this is a brand new device. We'll be getting one in very soon for review. So that is when we will tell you exactly how it stacks up in the real world. One thing we will say about the screens before I carry on with the user interface, uh, I, the IPS tech is an LTPS panel and it looks really, really punchy and really, really deep. Definitely gives the Galaxy S, uh, no edge, sorry, a run for its money, but the Super AMOLED panel will indefinitely have deeper blacks um, when we actually get it in a darker environment. What's more, in the Galaxy um, No Edge, I can swipe through to display settings right there, display and wallpaper, and here I can grab screen mode and we can change from adaptive display, AMOLED cinema, AMOLED photo, and basic. If I was to try that or see what options are available in the display settings here, we can see you've got color temperature, so that's awesome. We can change it from warmer to cooler, etc. but I'll leave it on default. And you can also change a few other features as well. So that's also the user interfaces and the screens kind of talked about in one fell swoop. Only real thing left to talk about other than specs is that camera user interface. So we can power up the UI on here. And as you can see, it takes advantage of the edge right there. That's where the camera button appears. We've also got a mode function. We have a bottle of water right there. I can take a picture of it and we can open up that picture. And while I do that, we can grab the same picture. Dum -da -dum. On here, oh, it looks like I'm recording a time-lapse video right there. Now I'm gonna swipe through to photo, try that once more. And they were all both taken with similar levels of handshake. Now let's take a look at how the two stack up against each other. Pinch right into that H, which is exactly what I tapped on. And it's 13 megapixels versus 16 megapixels. Nothing conclusive. My no edge is low on battery, so I can't whack the screen any brighter. But ultimately, what you get is at least a good camera on here, um, even if I can't tell whether or not it's a, it is a fantastic camera. With the P8, when we get it in later today, we will do some tests, dropping the lights, and tell you exactly how all those imaging credentials Huawei has stacked on top of this thing perform. As far as other things go, you've got CAT6 LTE on both devices. You've also got Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi, GPS, all the things that you would come to expect from a modern day flagship-esque device. Finally, batteries, and the batteries are very, very different on both. The ba Galaxy Note Edge has a 3000 milliamp battery under the hood, micro SD card, and micro SIM slot. It's an expensive device because it is so niche and premium. Um, by contrast, you have a 4 1,360 milliamp battery on this thing. Obviously supporting US on the go, it can support reverse charging so you can charge accessories or another smartphone with it. Um, and Huawei claims it's gonna get you around two days of battery or thereabouts. Really excited to get this device in. It looks great, it feels great, it's premium. Huawei is showcasing exactly what they can do with design. It's a great follow-up to their announcement at MWC where they gave us the Huawei watch. Stay tuned to BTEC. We've got the P8 in and we're actually gonna do a whole bunch of stuff with that later today. But if you have any questions about the P8 or the No Edge in the meantime, just fire them in the comments section below and I will endeavor to answer. If you like the video, click that like button and if you like BTEC in general, click subscribe. Thanks for watching. Get free tech advice for your business from O2Gurus. Search O2Business for more.